So let me just start off with, um, as you guys are probably aware, for those who have covered the county, we do a lot of these different proclamations. We come together as a community to celebrate the good things. Um, oftentimes, you know, when we're doing press announcements, we're celebrating like someone's building a new facility, there's a new job coming in, uh, or a new company coming into our area. Um, and so a lot of times we're celebrating. And that's, that's a positive thing that happens in every community across the United States. Um, but today we're not gathering for, I would say, the most positive real, uh, reality that we are faced with as, as a community and as a county. And as you guys all know, Brown County, we serve 30 different departments. We do everything from Neville Public Museum to libraries, public health, human services, the gamut. And part of one of the responsibilities of Brown County, of course, is to address some of the things that oftentimes the community doesn't want to know is happening. Uh, or just doesn't want to be, it's kind of like, I want to put my blinders to it um, and just kind of go about my day. The reality is that oftentimes the issue that we're about to discuss today hits every home in some capacity at some point in time. and. Oftentimes, especially at least the way I grew up, when we talked about uh, overdoses, drug use, it was always a f kind of related to the person who was living underneath the, the you know, is a dirty, you know, it's just not in our er everyday life. And what we're seeing today is proving out to be um, a very, very difficult, yet something that we need to come to grips with is the opiate um, fentanyl crisis that's happening in our country, not just in Brown County, uh, through the state. And for those who are scanning this, you'll see that in Kenosha County, Waukesha County, Dane County, the amount of overdoses that are taking place because of opiates, but being driven by fentanyl, our board right here shows the in continued increase of the overdoses being driven by fentanyl. Uh, and it's time for us as a community to act. And so we don't do declarations lightly. We do this when we feel there's an emergency in our community. And so what I've decided uh, was to officially declare um, fentanyl as a community health crisis in Brown County. And I'm going to read this uh, to give you a little bit of perspective of what we're seeing today. And then eventually I'm going to turn it over to Anna um, to talk about where we hope to take this into the future. Uh, but there is, of course, the more immediate need for the community to really start to realize that uh, your child, your loved one, your co-worker is just one small step away from death. Um, and the reality is that the fentanyl that is coming into our country uh, is, is, is creating a, a, a lot of harm. So let me read the, the declaration. Whereas the opiate crisis and the subsequent fentanyl crisis in, is of such magnitude that divisive action is necessary to protect the health, safety, and well-being of Brown County residents. And whereas fentanyl is a synthetic opiate that is approximately 50 times more potent than heroin and 100 times more potent than morphine and is widely available and highly addictive. And whereas traffickers are increasingly mass producing fake pills that are mixed with fentanyl and other illicit drugs and are marketed as legitimate prescription medications, increasing the rate of addiction and accidental overdose. And whereas there has been a significant increase in drug overdose deaths in Brown County associated with fentanyl since 2016. And the latest data for 2022 shows fentanyl associated with 79% of all drug overdoses, uh, drug overdose deaths. And whereas, according to the data from the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, more than 150 people die every day from overdoses related to synthetic opiates like fentanyl. Now, therefore, I, Troy Streckenbach, executive of Brown County, do hereby declare that fentanyl is a community health crisis in Brown County. Further, I direct 
Brown County departments to collaborate with public and private partners to take the necessary steps to address this health crisis. Brown County departments work with Brown County Board of Supervisors to develop a plan for the use of the opiate settlement funds for programming, advocacy, and raising awareness. Brown County Public Health Department to develop measurable objectives to track county's efforts in the fight against fentanyl and to report results to oversight committees, my office, on a quarterly basis. In addition, I encourage residents of Brown County to educate themselves and their families about the dangers of fentanyl, fentanyl-laced drugs, and accidental overdoses, and to engage in community-based harm reduction strategies, dated the 1st of September, 2022. Um, you know, the decision to bring this declaration forward was really kind of started with a phone call uh, from some friends, and then eventually a, a meeting with um, a, a mother from this community that basically said, Troy, are you aware of what's happening in Brown County? Now, we're all aware of the opiate crisis and what's happening. Brown County was one of the first counties to sign on to the legislation or onto the lawsuit. Uh, we were instrumental in helping Brown County, along with the other 72 counties, received the 70% of the settlement dollars, which we firmly believe that those dollars are going to be added, you know, outlaid between what public health, what human services, and the county board direct those dollars. But inside of all that, fentanyl was creeping its way in. We heard about it. Uh, it wasn't making, I would say, the big news, like what our drug task force would report on. But then I had that meeting and then we looked inside of our numbers and we were like, wow, this is start, this is kind of scary in terms of what's happening and how easily just that one pill can take a life that fast. And so we believe that it was necessary for us to bring this to the awareness of every resident in Brown County and most importantly, the state of Wisconsin. So one of the things that I'm going to do after this is I'm going to reach out to Kenosha County, Waukesha County, Washington, Dane County, and speak about the ability for us as counties to ask the Wisconsin Counties Association, which is already working on a plan around the best practices uh, that counties can integrate into their organization with the opiate settlement dollars to rise fentanyl as one of the key areas for us to add into this oversight and discussion so that we can have a statewide approach to addressing fentanyl and opiates in our in our county or in our counties and so from that standpoint this is the beginning this is a start for us to have as we all know through uh, any type of crisis first part is to recognize and admit that we have a problem and then from there we begin our journey and so from that standpoint we've asked Brown County Public Health to help us in this journey. The good thing is they've already identified this is one of the issues that they needed to tackle from a, from a health uh, perspective. So we're not starting fresh. Uh, we have a great team behind us in terms of the discussion, but it's gonna take a community as a whole to really figure out how we can have that communication with our individual family members, our coworkers. And so today in this room, you have many different faces that have had either impact or have the ability to impact, but most importantly, are interested in solving this problem collectively as a community. And that is the big challenge because government cannot solve this problem alone. We need the community to come forward. We need to have real conversations with our family members, our children, to talk about the dangers of fentanyl and how it can take your life just like that. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Anna Destry, our Anna Nick. You get a pass. Thank you. <laughs> uh, our public health officer to discuss uh, what public health is going to do in terms of addressing this issue. Anna? All right. Thank you, County Executive. Uh, and thank you. I always like to say thank you also to the media partners here because it, um, you are such a pivotal role in this as well. Um, the support and declaration from County Executive Troy Streckenbach highlights the importance of the opioid and fentanyl crisis. 
and the need to come together now to make a difference. Because we cannot afford to lose another life one to this epidemic. One thing public health does really well is bring together community partners to work toward achieving better health outcomes. The fentanyl crisis is no different. We recognize that to make real change in our community, to work toward less overdoses, that it will need to be a community effort, as County Executive pointed out. And Brown County Public Health is poised well to lead this effort. Brown County Public Health will be convening an overdose task force, which will include Brown County departments, community partners, and the voice of those who are most impacted. The task force will focus on three equally important pillars, which are prevention, response, and recovery. Each pillar will have measurable goals and outcomes, with the ultimate outcome being a reduction in fentanyl and opiate overdoses and deaths in Brown County. Those goals and outcomes will be determined by the task force members themselves, and they will be data-driven, best practices, which will be informed by community voice. The success of this initiative will be dependent on the cross-sector collaboration and participation as we focus on the three pillars of prevention, response, and recovery. And we will engage public and private partners in this commitment as we know it is the only way to truly drive system change. To help inform the work, we know that we have to hear from community members who are impacted by the opioid and fentanyl crisis. This could be overdose survivors or users. It could be family members, friends, or others who has someone close to them who is impacted. To achieve learning from community members, Brown County Health and Human Services will be hosting several listening sessions. The first will be Monday, September 12th, from 8, 5 to 8 p.m. at Backstage at the Meyer, and it will be facilitated by Tom Farley. And if that name sounds familiar to you, it is because it is Chris Farley's brother who we know passed from an opiate overdose. We hope you can join us at this very important event, as hearing from you is the first step to help us understand how we will most effectively move forward to prevent opioid and fentanyl overdoses in the future. Thank you for being here today, and we look forward to getting to work at, on this. So at this point, uh, really, as we mentioned, first part is declaring, second is to mobilize and act, and, and then from this point, we'll, we'll start getting together with the community to talk about how we can address this issue. And as um, Anna mentioned, there's going to be three pillars that we're going to be focused in on. There's going to be deliverables and ultimately actions. And, uh, you know, at the end, we're hoping that we can change that curve. Because every, in every one of those, that's a family member, that's a loved one that died um, unexpectedly, and, and we need to change that in this community. We're losing a generation. In a time when we have uh, workforce shortages, um, it, it just, we need, to, we need to change the way we have this dialogue within our community.